Hey, good morning, buddy. I lost my voice last night, so Lance Mackey's going to take over today. Good morning. I'm not taking over anything. <laughs> We're downtown. We're yeah, right here at the Mushers meeting, right? We're in the heart of it right now. It's, you know, things are about to get real. So if you're just joining us, welcome to the 2020 Anchorage for Rendezvous Open Class World Championship. I'm your host, Kill Casey, with not rookie, but I did rod four-time champion, Lance Mackey, who's also bib number 14. Yeah. A team to watch out there, right? No, one of 26 anyway. <laughs> yeah, we got 26 teams today that are about to start at noon. Yep. These are the pre-race interviews. Lance is in position to be able to join a mushers meeting. This is the Anchorage uh, Sled Dog Racing Association meeting right now, officially, and then the mushers will meet, right? Correct. And then what's the plan for your dog team? You're going to leave about 28 minutes after the start? Yeah, I think the, um, I think the, you know, the normal procedure, drop them, get them somewhat in the mode, gang lines out, sleds out, you know. We got a bucket of food waiting for when they get back. Right, exactly. Man, all, all those things that... Uh, don't take that much time compared to a thousand miler. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, exactly. on, yeah, a, the thousand miler takes forever, right? right? I'm gonna come back and have some lunch this afternoon <laughs> with my family. I'm gonna sleep in my hotel room right here. Right, because yeah. your wife and child are here, right? They're here. They should be down here momentarily. And so, if people like Kathy uh, have uh, comments or, or fan comments for uh, for Lance, leave them here. Lance will check out the feed later today. Absolutely. And uh, we always love having you. So we'll swing down and catch you after the meeting. Hey, I'll Kathy, turn the thanks for being Turn the camera around. There's Lance up close. Yeah, thanks to everybody for being a part of it worldwide. It's um, awesome. Thanks to this guy. So appreciate Right on, brother. We'll see you there. And here's what's going to happen. That's where the mushers meeting is going to be, right there. This is the official downtown view, folks. You can see ASDRA means Anchorage Sled Dog Racing Association. So they're getting their briefing right now. It takes a whole army. They got their radios, the new radio system that's been donated, a really high tech, cool system, which is sweet. The streets right here are gonna fill up with people. So by noon, this is where the bleachers and all the people will be packed in. And right now we're just interviewing folks as we go down the trail. Bib number one is gonna be Brent Beck, International World Cup winner. Brent, hey, you got a second? Hey, good to have you back. Can you tell us about your family a little bit? Because we got two Becks on here, right? Yeah. Brent, number one, and then Danny, number six. Yeah, I think I'm the third generation uh, of Beck mushers in the, in the family. So, um, and, uh, and then there's, uh, the, there's four generations now with my nieces and I and, and nephew, uh, they all race dogs as well. So, we're trying to keep the family tradition going. And who's back home uh, with the kennel? Where's your kennel? It's in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories in Canada. Yeah. And, uh, we, we don't have, uh, we only have a few dogs there, but uh, Lisa's mom is uh, check, looking after the dogs there. And, so we don't have to worry about that, Lucky. <laughs> and what's it like to race in downtown Anchorage? Oh, it's exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I needed uh, some Pepto-Bismol this morning. <laughs> I know, that stomach turns, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I looked at my eggs and I said, I don't know if I want to eat this this morning. <laughs> How do you think the dogs are feeling? Now, they're veterans, they're, right? Oh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they, I have lots of faith in them and they have lots of faith in me, so uh, we work as a team and we're good. We're good. Awesome, great. And all your fans can leave comments here and you'll get to them later. They'll be on the feed for you, okay? Awesome. Right on, brother. Good luck out there. The trail looks great, right? Our temperatures look good? Yeah, everything looks awesome. Thank okay, cool. Much. And here's Brent's team right now. You can see everybody's doing all their preps, right? You're getting the lines ready. Yeah. Got to make sure nothing breaks. I've seen that happen before, right? These dogs are pulling like crazy at the start. And uh, I've been at a world championship, in fact, with Ego Ellis when his, uh, one of his tug lines broke at the start. And he, you know, he's won this race a bunch of times. <laughs> what are you working on? Okay, cool. And when will the dogs actually come out of the truck? So yeah, we got about an hour to go, right? Hour or so to go. So we'll. Okay, half an hour, and we'll see the dogs out here. And this is the first team to go, right? Bib number one. Okay, awesome. Here's the Beck crew. I'm yellow knife, looking good. This is the sled that Brent's gonna roll in. He's got a dandler there. You can see how light and tight that is. So here's the view of the first team. This is gonna be bib number one. Brent Beck from Yellowknife, Canada. Multi-generational mushing family here. You're about an hour before the race. You are right here on 4th Ave with your host, Kale Casey, for the weekend. Thanks to all of our sponsors for making the race happen. 
$65,000 purse. Here is the Beckmobile, where their team, if you're a Beck racing fan from Canada, throw some hearts out. There you go. And you had the opening interview with Lance Mackey. Here's Gary Markley, our good friend from up in the Salcha, Alaska area. In fact, his family has a very cool trailer. Look at his sled system. A nice Dandler again. You've seen these light, fast sprint sleds. Here's their child working the dogs, getting them all. Look how nice and small and beautiful light these open class dogs are. Hi, how have you been? Here we go, here's Gary. This is Facebook Land. How are your, um, your people back home doing? Who is back home? <laughs> and our neighbors, uh, Nikki and Leah, are taking care of Nikki Sal and Leah, taking care of our dogs. Right our on. Cat. Cool. Now tell us about, I'm looking at your dog team. I can already tell the, the four dogs that I can see are about 40 pounders, right? 40, yeah, there's some bits my smaller females here. Yeah, and uh, we get some 45 to the pounders maybe, but uh, the rest are about 50, 55 pound males. But yeah. these, they're finely tuned, three minute mile no, race no, machines. No, no, no. Okay, you're a veteran, so for all the people back home who don't know what that means, you, you, this is a race that is incredibly complex to run, right? You can't just sprint this thing. No, no, you got to really, it's, it's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of tunnels, there's people, there's bells, there's people, you know, cheering your dogs on. you got to calm them down, you know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a little, it's a real stressful thing. For the dogs, definitely, it's, there's a lot more obstacles out there. People, you know, a lot of people. Right, a lot, a lot of folks of on the trip. <laughs> a lot of folks. Yeah. Cool. I'll scream at them. Hey, somebody has a beer. Say, hey, I'd like your beer, but nobody, nobody gets me one. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be somebody out there handing out refreshments. Hopefully somebody hears this. Okay, if you're on the trail today, Gary Bib number two out of Salcha. Good luck out there. We'll swing back your way here soon. Right. We got a little bit more pregame to do here. All right. Armin Johnson and his crew. Look at their nice rig, staying warm. It's a whole family affair here. There's Armin's sled. All right, this is just a pre-interview where we give you the insider view that you couldn't even get if you were here because you're not allowed on the street like this. So there's his little lineup. Marshall's will move their dogs around. Marshall's meeting is getting ready right here. Just a few minutes away from that, there's Wendy. She was on the tag sled ahead of me last night on the video of the trail. Hey, there's Dan, my sled snowmobile rider from yesterday. Thanks for the ride, Dan. If, if you guys all enjoyed the trail video, Dan was your pilot. We got about 4,000 views on that. Yeah. Okay, we got Chris Racy, everybody's moving through. This is the official mushers meeting. If you're just joining us, you're in downtown Anchorage. It's race day. We're starting in about an hour. Uh, part of the formality of world championship races, and in fact, all quality races uh, worldwide is that mushers meet uh, generally about an hour before the race. Janet is the race marshal right there. She'll give them paperwork, reminders of the rules, uh, their start times, everything's very official. There's a lot of money on the line here, $65,000, thanks to our sponsors. First place will get just shy of $8,000. Second place, $6,500 and on down the line. So you're gonna see a lot of uh, officialness here. Everything's um, run by the book. This club has been doing this for a long, long, long time. And there's, at the end of the day, ways to solve all the controversies if there are any and get the money awarded. All right, Penny Hayes said that sled ride on the trail was awesome. Yeah, we're really grateful for that. Uh, Dan did a great job. Eli found my hat and, and gave it back to me. When you guys called, I was doing a live stream. When Dave called me to return my hat, oh, yeah. I, was, I was screaming. <laughs> I was like, reject, reject. So here's the mushrooms meeting. Everybody there's Eli Campbell. She's a favorite here of the rookie class. Greg Taylor right there, everybody bouncing around. Eric LaForce in the house. Mark Hardem, Maya, Karoj, Marvin. You see right on down the line. Don Cousins. 
Guy Girard, they're all here. Okay, they're getting the trail report, folks, from Scott Maruski there. Hard and fast trail today. Okay, our race marshal Janet's given some instructions here. You're at the mushers meeting moments before the start of the 2020 for Rondi. Yeah, I 
Okay, that was... <clears throat> Alright folks, that was the mushers meeting. So you just watched the mushers get a briefing from Janet, the race marshal. Trail super fast, super hard. We'll go follow some folks as they head to their trucks, and then we'll go live. <laughs> Wait a second, are you are you going out first instead of Brent? Oh, that's your finish? Michael Tessner from Germany giving a uh, prophetic uh, thought here on his finish. On Sunday, it's only Friday now. <laughs> a Rondi veteran here, gonna do great out there. Good luck, Michael. You gotta catch KP though, right? Okay. Oop. Here's uh, Cruz Porto's sled. He'll be bib number four, folks. So we're back to the pre-race interviews here. That's what a lot of these Dandler Hornet sleds are gonna be like out there. There's Karosh and his orange. He's got his orange harnesses, orange coat, orange everything. Okay, it's been two years since your amazing debut, yes. KP. And since then, you've um, gotten even stronger dogs. You've worked on your podcast with ThoughtWorks Radio, which has been awesome. And uh, even running your business and all your other stuff. What's different this year? What do we got? Uh, a lot of young dogs. <laughs> so the goal is to be able to take the dog, young dogs out through the trail, give them a good experience. Uh, just uh, have a safe, clean run this year. You know, the, a couple years ago when I did it, it was uh, just crazy fast dogs, just uh, trying to slow them down. They're still crazy fast too, but you're going to be extremely conservative this year because of those young dogs. And that two years ago, that trail was punchier, right? And your dogs were so powerful, they were really having a hard time. That is correct. Uh, two years ago, this trail, was, we had bad conditions. This year's action has been extremely fast, supposedly. I haven't been on the trail uh, today, but yesterday it looked very set, very fast. So maybe even harder to slow them down, but honestly, so that's what I mean. <laughs> How's our temperature out there? Feels uh, great, right? Yeah, temperature's like 10 or 11 or something like that. It's nice, nice and warm. That's Which is fantastic. Yeah. You have fans all over. You got Mandy Collins saying, go KP. Bonnie Foster wishing you happy new trails. And all sorts of folks around the world can leave their comments for you here, and you'll catch them later. Of course. Thank you so much. Bib number four? Right, oh, my gosh. That's a great position, isn't it? You'll still have a good, solid trail. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Potentially a head-on passing, but uh, we'll see. Towards the end, right? Oh, yeah. towards the outer loop there? Right, right, right on. We'll be keeping an eye on you, of course, coming up Cordova. That's where I'll be next after the start. Hopefully and, be like a couple years ago, right? and good luck, right? Thanks, buddy. All right, KP's going to be set up perfectly in this race. Bib number four. He'll be leaving after, uh, <clears throat> let's see, we have Eric Beck up there. And then we have, sorry, Brent Beck, Gary Markley, Armin Johnson, and then Karosh. So you're looking at the order right here. So way up there will be the start team. And now as we walk down fourth, the team starts stacking up. So team number five, team number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, ten. And then we swing back around and Amy Dunlap uh, and the Dunlap kennels right over here. So let's go take a look. We'll go talk to Buddy. There's Amy and Jason and Buddy. What time did Amy get in from Fairbanks? <laughs> yeah, how you feel? This is your first appearance. Because you've been, your, 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 your husband's has been taking care of everything. Yeah, he's a good handler. What a guy. And your, your bib number, okay, yeah, so let's talk about that. The trail will be, how will, uh, how will the trail be by the time you go? Does the trail get softer? Yeah, it gets softer and, yeah, warmer and 
So KP going fourth has a distinct advantage over somebody going 24th. Okay, because we know that trail is hard right now. Especially like right in the beginning here, so we hit downward elbow, you know. Yeah, you can jump in here. Jason, Amy, Dunlap, everybody. She said it's better, but Croach has a better chance of having to cut out fast. Yes. Okay. So for everybody watching at home, they want to go to ASDRA, ASDRA.org, pull up the map, look at the checkpoints, and what Jason's talking about is out in the field out there, there is a, an area where you could have a head on. Yeah, right? Yeah, the chances are going to be somewhere around Tudor, uh, Tudor Road, and she predicted uh, Tudor Road overpass on that overpass, only because that would be the worst possible. It's happened before. It's, uh, she said, one through four, possibly. Um, and then, uh, and then the next four teams from the back up would, uh, that would those are the ones that are going to have a head on pass. First, okay. First and last team, it's a crazy long trail. When we were snow machining yesterday, I was like, is this ever going to end? What, how long is 25 miles? Even at 16 miles an hour on the machine. <laughs> <laughs> but Amy, no stranger. Both of you have third place finishes in this race, right? So the goal, so now you're her, considered her, veterans. Her goal pan hangs on the wall, mine's in the trailer. Yeah, yours is in storage somewhere, right? He's the only one that had third. He says, he the I know, he was claiming that at the Mushers uh, bib draw that he has some third place hidden somewhere. Yeah, yeah let's see it, you guys. I like that. Let's see it. All right, there we go. Uh, uh, Kathy Batcher says, good luck, Amy, and so does Mandy Collins. Thank you. So your fans are tuning in there. There's the Dunlaps, always in the green right there, not to be mistaken by the streetbers. But their green is pretty darn nice right there. Look at that. Hey, I just want to clarify. Uh, green Bay Packers had the green yellow first. That's, that's right. And the pack did. All right, cool. Here we go. Streepers right here. Yep, we got, um, we got a brand new uh, microphone system on this iPhone. And so the, the receiving side is a little soft. But just put your headset on and turn it up, folks. Okay, this is the new Streeper uh, mobile that they added... Uh, this year to the fleet, it's got three extra meters or 10 extra feet over last year's. You can tell it's like a doggy paradise. It almost has like different zones, a gear zone, a dog zone, and then uh, the home of champions right there. Hi, babies. And uh, Lena, Bud's wife, got the La Pa World Championship under her belt a couple weeks ago, congrats. And then Buddy, of course, looking to get and while we're waiting on those guys, we'll, there's Don. We'll give Don the, how are you guys? Are you rocking it? I always like this rig in this size because I don't have to walk as far to cover it. That's right. I don't have to do it. <laughs> how are we feeling? Did you sleep last night? Yeah, oh, fairly good, fairly good sleep, yeah. Okay. Maybe not as long as I'd like, only six hours, but that's better than nothing. And uh, you're a veteran, 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 hard trail. You'll be going out six, so you have a little bit of advantage today, don't you? It always helps to go a little further up the pack, you know. But the good teams are good, and I think the ones that are further back are good. They'll handle it there and be just fine. The, my, their dogs might have to work a little harder. Is that what will happen there? Yeah, well, some of the teams that are in the back here, they've raced some pretty good races already, so they're probably pretty good condition, pretty tough dogs. You know? Right. We're into almost March now, right? Um, Sunday's March 1st, so. Yeah, dogs are tough and ready now. If they're not tough and ready now, then... Right on. All right, you got a bunch of fans t tuning in here, Don, to say hello. So Bonnie says hello, and then also tune in later, and you can see all the comments. Because you're one of the regulars out here. You've been a steady. How many years is this now? Well, I'm getting close to 20 on this one. Not quite as many as the North American, but close to 20, and I really enjoy it. It's a good race. 20 years of the Rondi, and a lot of us are dreaming of our first. Huh. So congratulations. I always tell people, if you dream about it, come and do it. Don't wait till you think you got a team. Come and do it, because you need to do it. Oh, to do it. There you go. Advice from Don Cousins. If you have a dream of coming to the Rondi, just jump in and do it, right? Do it. It's one of the great urban races of all time. The city is incredible. It's a historic event. There's no other race like it, and the organization is just phenomenal to make sure they get me around. Some people say oh, it's a bit of an obstacle course, but you know what? It's just open class sled dog racing, and it's absolutely Tunnels, bridges, culverts, parks. Bring it on. <laughs> right on. Okay. And here's the fam helping out, everybody. Right on. Okay, we're going to keep cruising. Bid number six. So about 12 minutes in, we'll see you head out, right? So about 12-12 for Don Cousins' team heading out from downtown 4th. There you go. His dog's resting inside still. We got Todd Whitcomb now. He's <laughs> trying to keep it together. 
All right, Todd, you've been working your butt off because you're not just a musher, you're also part of the race, right? Oh, yeah, I helped organize. I was doing some IT, setting up uh, computers for the timers yesterday and today, getting ready for, for the back end and the front end, I guess. Right on, cool. And uh, who, how many dogs we got going? I'll be running 11 today. So a small team, but I did 11 last year and I did fairly well, so we'll see if I can repeat that. And starting number seven is a pretty good position, right? I think so. I think so. I've got a lot of people behind me that are itching to pass, but I'm a good passer. <laughs> Cool. We're going to zoom out so everybody can see Todd right there. This is his setup. He's got his uh, another Dandler sled. So you're seeing a lot of these Dandler sleds out here. You can see his breed of dog. 11 dogs, but good size, good muscle. Hi, pumpkin. Hey. <laughs> you got great leg muscle. Looking good there. Focused. Yeah. Oh, how exciting. How exciting. Okay, there's Marvin Cochran there. Good luck again, Marvin. Good. Marvin's a veteran of this event. He has done this a lot, folks. And uh, I think this will be a... Well, you, what do you think about the trail yesterday, Marvin? Looking good? Yep, good and hard. And uh, starting eighth, that's a good position. And uh, what's the goal for this year? Do you... Do you uh, did you pick anything up from last year, or every year do you do it a little different, or what's your strategy? Uh, I just uh, go along with what, uh, what the dogs look like they're doing, you know, and what they, uh, what they could do. Copy that. So you're looking at your team. Are you looking at a watch or a GPS or anything? Yeah. GPS. And are you keeping some sort of pace in your mind? Uh, yeah, they got a pace. Yeah. Do you, it's, uh, put it in them. <laughs> That's trained in them, right? Yeah. That's what you've been working on all year. Yeah. Is it ever tempting just to go a little faster because uh, it's such a pretty day? Well, they're uh, only going to go with what you train them to do, you know? They ain't going to do anything else. Copy that. So what Marvin's saying here is that you got to put the work in your team. They ain't trained to do. They ain't going to make it. Right, right. So Marvin's uh, big focus of the year is this race. He's got a dog team for generations now he's worked with. Ed Wood says, have a good run, Marvin. So he's got his fans out there. Leave your comments here for the mushers, whether it's live or on the rebroadcast. They'll come back and watch these feeds. Okay, we'll come back to Frank right there. And we'll come back to Bud because we want to make sure we get everybody in here. We got... Okay, Guy... Our Canadian friends here, Guy Gerard, right here. His rig. There it is. We are officially at Guy Gerard's rig. Second Canadian in the lineup today. Our first Canadian will be the first team out, Brent Beck, bib number one. And then this is bib number nine, Guy Gerard. He's also from Canada, getting his. All his gear ready over here. There we go. There's Guy's family taking care. Look at that. Nice tight dog truck. Simple system. Nice feeders. Guy's around here getting ready. You got the Taylor crew. Always busy. There they are. Hello, world. Good to have you. Who's back home helping you out? Um, who do we have? Earl Cazzo from Fort Yukon. Thank you, Earl. Uh, there we go. I want to make sure Earl gets the word because the Taylor clan is down here ready to win. Got my son here. Got my old Koi Cook River. James, James Williams. Can there we go. James to... Williams here. That's old school right there. Right on. Here's the good light right here. We'll get, get a little shot of you working. Have you ever had a line break at a race? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Christina Wood says hi, Rick and Greg. So the fans are chiming in here. Make sure to leave your comments for the Taylors. They will check them out. This is like the living scrapbook from uh, this is the official feed, folks. So whatever you write here stays for all time. So cheer on your favorite mushers. Let us know if you recognize folks or where you're from in the world, or maybe you've done this race. Here's the little, I'll zoom out here a little bit. Here's the Taylor rig scene. They're getting their runners ready. 
Look at all the pre-race rituals here. We're giving you a one by one walk down. There's Greg. Greg's making sure he's got all his stuff together. So there we go. Eric LaForce over here. LaForce will be running in 21st bib, so that's a little tricky. 21, 21. Hi. Here we go. Here's the grizzly kennel. So this is the uh, trailer of number, bib number 21, Eric LaForce from Quebec. So first time at the race. He'll be going out 21. There's the military airships there, you can hear. Okay, Jeff Kahn, bib number 20, or sorry, 12. There he is. Jeff's got his, uh, here you go, there you are. Good morning, Mr. Kahn, good to see you. You got your coaching board there, and then you got your, uh, your map here. Okay, so every musher has a little bit of a insider map where their players go, right? How's everybody looking out? Uh, this is a hard, fast trail, so is that going to change anything for you? No, no, I'm pretty much, you know, going to go the speed that I can. Yeah. And do you train in a certain pace, and do you follow that on the GPS, or what's yeah, your technique? Yeah, basically, that's what I do. You know, I try to show a certain pace and, uh, I don't want to really go much above that. They should be able to maintain it all the way around. Except that, you know, when we come to get over past Tudor, uh, it's a lot more twisty turny up and down. Twisty turny past Tudor? Yeah, that'll, uh, you know, slow the pace down. Yeah. Right on. You got a lot of folks chiming in here. Uh, Molly Stewart says, Hi, Jeff, have a great run. You hey, got Molly. Bonnie Foster, whose dogs are listening to the live stream because they can hear the dogs barking. <laughs> Which I always love that when I'm home. I always have my dogs watch, of course, and they uh, they hear all this in the background, right? Because it's basically a dog party. Yeah, thanks for doing this, Hey, it's fun. And uh, yesterday, so when we're on our on our 52-minute mission around the track, you're right behind me. So everybody who sees my camera spin around on the trail view, that was Jeff there holding on. So that gives you a chance to really feel the trail, right? Oh, yeah. I think people wonder, like, why are the mushers without their dogs? Yep. Um, yeah. Looking at those obstacles, getting a feel for the yeah, how it's marked, maybe. It was beautiful. So we wish you the best of luck. You got a great position. We'll be, of course, cheering you on. Bib number 12. They are, in fact, this is my cheat sheet, folks. So there's his cheat sheet for his team, and then there's mine. So you can <laughs> so you can see who Jeff's going to run out there. Okay. Best of luck. Luck from Esther, Alaska, Jeffrey Kahn. All right, let's get some more dogs in here. We're getting closer to the start here, folks. We're going to get some more interviews, and then we'll... Dogs are getting marked, so you can see the paint, right? They're getting their little blue marks. How are you? Are you guys all helping out, part of the crew? All right, excellent. Thanks for having you. This is the canine crew, folks. These are our VIP handlers who are learning all about mushing. This is the Fur Ronde official live feed. So whoever's watching around the world, the Hilton crew is here, right? Excellent, and thank you. I've stayed there many times. I know it's a it's the big tower in town, so everybody can see it. Holy moly! Wait a second. There's the Hilton. Where's the Hilton? There's the Hilton. Thank you. We have uh, we here we have 127 people right now from around the world, and then we'll have thousands later watching this because of your funding. Because there's a purse here, and these mushers can travel and get a little return for all the work. Exactly. The Rodney is the best party around. So we've got this is bib number 13, right? This is Michael yeah. Tetzner from Germany. He's a contender, a real contender for first place every year. Uh, this is, uh, what have your duties been? You've been doing a little handling here? We're, right now we're in the room, we're getting Clean to it. pet the dogs, and then we're going to get to help okay. actually put the harnesses on them and running down the avenue. Cool, so Michael's got his little pregame ritual right now, right? Right. I'm happy that I have such a nice team. <laughs> yeah. I know. You didn't know 
all the work. So, We're just here to help. The, the million dollar bill is on. <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so you guys are really teamed up with a real champ. We, keep an eye on this bib today. Bib number... From Germany, but training uh, in Montana Creek, north of Willow, on one of the toughest trails that he puts in himself with his daughter and his wife. This guy's dedicated. The only question is, can they rondy again? Because this, this race is so tough on these dogs, mentally, right? You can see that they're light, and they're lean, and they're beautiful. Look at that. All right. We have folks joining us from Ireland and Switzerland and all over the world now. Anchorage, Alaska, about 10 degrees, going up to about 20 today. It was minus 9 this morning in Willow, where the Iditarod starts next week, where I live. So we have really good firm trails. Here's Michael's daughter putting the dogs up in the boxes. And they love their little houses. And the vets just put all the blue marks on, so those dogs are marked officially. And now, tomorrow, every dog on Michael's team has to have a mark. You can't add new dogs. And if your dogs get tired, you have to carry them. So those are some of the tough rules of sprint city racing is that unlike the Iditarod where you can drop your dogs with veterinarians at checkpoints at the fur rendezvous, if half your team gets tired, you got to carry half your team. So this is a very tactical race. Each dog weighs a certain amount. They can run a certain amount. They can't run any faster. So it's all the training and genetics and nutrition. And Michael Tetzner is right up there with the best in the world. So Team Hilton, helping out the champ, or hopefully future champ. And again, great place to stay, and the canine crew is like the coolest position there is here. So we're just on day one. You'll see them the next couple days, right? We'll, do, we'll keep doing our live feed for everybody. And there's what an open class sprint dog looks like, folks. So folks joining us from, look at that, Clyde Mayo joining us from Hawaii. Right on, Clyde, beautiful day in Alaska. And look at those Tetzner racing hounds. Super lean, perfect conformity, they're just, uh, built up of mitochondria basically they're mitochondria machines taking oxygen fat <coughs> and um, protein and turning it into pure speed and for them it's the greatest honor in the world to run all these miles and get that endorphin rush so they're ready to go they know what this is like and we're going to wish them the best of luck right there's your little shout out to my family in Oberschweiß in Alaska Awesome, and we will have German speakers on here and they will respond to this, so you see, but because this gets a lot of replays, right? So thank you so much, Hilton crew. We'll see you soon, I'm gonna keep cruising. And then we got bib number 14, we got Lance Mackey right here. We started our day with Lance. There's Lance's family helping out. Boom, boom. How we doing, everybody? There's Lance and Dave Turner and Eli Campbell. So here we are with more of the cool kids, I like to say, back here. We're, we're more down forth, have a little bit, right? We're not quite up in the crush. Uh, so this is, uh, Lance is uh, going to be going 28 minutes after noon. So there's two minute intervals. So if you see somebody's bib number, you do the math, times two, add the time, add it to noon. That's when they're leaving. So uh, check out our interview earlier. Here's what Lance's setup looks like. He's got his own little film crew as well. Look at that, all dialed in. He's got his race systems. Hello, from all dialed in. I have a system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make it look like it. Lance, <laughs> fake it till you make it. There you go. Christy Seleski saying hi from Nome, Lance. You got all your fans chiming in. And Lance says hello, Christy. And, yep, and uh, a couple weeks, Lance will be up there which is super cool. Uh, I hope we will be up there too, depending on travels. Look at the, uh, the, the sleds with the Hilton in the background there. One of our sponsors, Don Brown joining us from up in Fairbanks. Our online audience is super knowledgeable. So if you have questions that I can't get to. Hey Kale. Hey Kale. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Blair and Quince, how have you guys been? Can you even hear me? Let me turn this around because um, the microphone on this side is better. Hey. Quince, get in here. Hey. Now they can hear us. Excellent. Okay, are you fans or are you like, are you just on the, are we're you groupies? We're, we're, we're groupies. We are. You're, yeah. we're, we're all Lance Mackey groupies, are we? Absolutely. Should we just admit it? Yeah, that we're true. standing here on 4th, 
just to be near Lance. Yeah, yep. greatest of all time. And you, Kale. Oh, stop also it. Near you. Um, yeah. I need some time management help. What time is it? It's, you got about 25 minutes. Is Do I? True? Yeah. Okay, uh, so let me turn this around again. 11.30. Where are you, how are you going to follow the race? Are you going to do like little transistor radios? Maybe. Are you going to have your phone on? Are you going to be photobombing in the background? Okay, here's my little radio thing. I had a big one last year. I'm going to try the little guy this year, and then I call into the radio. Yeah, off of Cordova. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I know. Hey, Kathy Betridge says, hello, Blair and Quince from California. So this is one gigantic family. Everybody's here. We'll see you soon. Good to see you. Congrats on your successes lately. Quince has been working his ass off on the sled dog uh, races lately, doing all the distance. Here's Wendy's scene. Wendy Callis and her daughter joining us again from up north. Look at this, just a nice, powerful, big F-350. Wendy's a little shy, <laughs> but she does like the corner, the big corners up there, and, and she handles everything well. I want to be you someday, okay, just so you know. I want to, <laughs> I know, I know, that's, that's what Jamie and I always joke about. We're like, we want our own kennel, we want, uh, and then we're like, we're crazy, we're crazy. Uh, Audra Akala says, go Wendy, run like the wind. Hi, See, there you go. The feed brings everybody together. So Darren Kinvig says, hi, Wendy. Hey, Darren. Yeah, Darren's out there on Whitehorse, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep, he's a great fan. We love seeing him. And he sends nice notes behind the scenes to help give me uh, an understanding of what this is like at home to watch. I know it's exciting because this race changed my life. But Wendy, good luck out there. We're going to see you on bib number 15. So 1230, right? So remember, take the big number and add, or times it by two. Hello. Everybody knows Maya because she's famous from yesterday. The live feed here, rookie. Big number 25, which means Second last. you'll go out at like almost one o'clock. Yeah. Which means you have a lot of time. Yeah. And here's the crew. There's Mandy and Dad and Mark. <clears throat> and we had a lot of your family reach out yesterday, so they know you're alive and well. They know that you you got a good rest last night of here. <laughs> like too good? Too good. <laughs> right on. Cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing uh, down to Hans Gotts and then I'm going to reset and get this thing on because it's going to be, we're, we're there, right? For the, for the lead team. So for those at home who don't get this, like because there is a bib draw and because Maya has a 25, a it's a whole different race for her, right? When Brent Beck goes first up there at noon, you still have 50 minutes. Yeah. So there's a whole management of feeding and watering and things at home people might not understand. You really have to have a little bit of patience and strategy in this. You can't just have your dogs out here now, right? You gotta know when that flow is. Yeah, half the teams will be on the trail before we bring our dogs down. Exactly, and some teams will be roaring, you know, there'll be some head on passing depending on how this all goes down, right? Yeah. But that's part of the strategy of being here many years, learning, and then sharing that with the next generation, and then watching them defy you, do their own thing, and come up with their own strategy, right? <laughs> that's what it's all about ed streeper saying push him maya yes i will yeah there you go excellent okay so all your fans are there uh people sending shout outs from all around the world so check the feed later we'll go get hans and we'll see you out there and they're another dandler so dandler seems to win the day on these sides until you get to hans gods here you go bonnie bonnie foster the one and only legendary yukon quest champion Hans Gotts, who's not running a Dandler. Who's not running a Dandler. Oh, no, Here, no. there no. we go. There's Hans. <laughs> when right I pulled on. in your driveway last time, you saved me. Remember I got a flat tire? I remember that. And you yes, saved my yes, butt. Yes, so yes, Hans no, is no, not no. just a great musher. He's a hero. Here he is, up close. Rookie year. Rookie year, yeah. You got some butterflies? Uh, not really, but uh, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. I know. Big, big teams. <laughs> lots yeah. Of teams in front of me, lots of teams coming against me, I guess. <laughs> uh, Ed Streeper says Hans makes awesome sleds, which is true. The God sled marker up here, folks at home, you can jump online. You've been custom making sleds for years. Uh, ever since I started running dogs 33 years ago. and uh, This one, let's take a look at this one right here. This is, this is a prototype I'm running today, and uh, it's going to be on the market uh, very soon. Okay, so, and just in case, because I know the, there's two different microphones on an iPhone, and, and mine's better than yours. So, Hansa has a prototype sled, and he'll be making it available 
later this year or this year? Oh, absolutely, it's going to be out uh, later this spring. Okay, because you got a lot of friends who are chiming in saying, uh, uh, like Rita Holtz loves your sleds, John Stewart uh, from Scotland says uh, good luck from your friend, All right. Bonnie yeah, Foster nice of course time. wanted me to uh, say hello this morning to you, and on and on. So um, you got fans everywhere. The big question, is is this the same team that you've been training now, or did you have a different team at home as well? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I, I, I don't believe in uh, having different dogs for different races. <laughs> I always believed in the multi-purpose dog right from the get-go. Okay. And, uh, so these are your these are your Yukon Quest dogs? They're like... These are your Alaskan Huskies. Ten of them who run the Quest last year in that team, you know, and all my whole front end, uh, they have actually run two ID last year. And the quest last year, so wow, they remember that street very well. <laughs> yeah, okay, copy that. Cool, and so that that gives us an idea of what's in your mind and how much respect you have for the breed. That the breed can do anything. You work with it. I believe in that. Uh, yeah, firm believer in that. Yeah, super cool. That's a great way to sign off. Okay, I'm gonna head to the front, and then we'll see you about 12:52. Sounds good. Okay, good great, good job, Hans. Everybody, that's Hans Gotts. I'm gonna head up to the front. We got to get ready here, folks, to uh, rumble. I got to reset and put my, uh, okay, I got to reset. We'll see you up there. Um, everybody's been cheering on everybody. Keep that up. The mushers will watch us tonight in their hotel rooms and down the road too. So thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Come back in about 10 minutes.